Okay, so here we're going to check out the cap of a portobello mushroom. So here's the mushroom, it's really big, right? And so these are um, good to eat. I just got this one over at Safeway not too long ago. So very good to eat mushroom. We can see inside that it is a gilled fungus, right? So see all these gills here? So the gills give away that it's in the Basidia mycota. Now earlier we mentioned, or I mentioned, how I want you to focus in on genetic diversity and how sex is there to create genetic diversity. And within genetic diversity, we want to look at how the spores get away or disperse and how they outbreed. So mechanisms for outbreeding and dispersal. So usually this mushroom then would be up in the air. We would have a stalk at the base of this and it could release the spores. So all the spores are on these gills, right? So it could release those spores out and the spores are gonna fly in the wind. So one way it's adapted is for the spores to fly in the wind, okay? Now it's interesting though, if you're just creating spores that fly in the wind, why put so much energy into such a huge high energy um, thing as a mushroom? Okay, so now I've moved this to the dissecting scope. Here's a close-up view of the gills. I want you to keep on thinking, why would a fungus invest so much energy in making such a really nice thing to eat as a mushroom? Right, I mean, we eat these. These are very nourishing, give us tons of protein, a lot of, um, a lot of stuff for our body. Why would the fungus make something that, that it wants us to eat when it uses its spores to float out in the wind, because if we eat it, the spores won't fly out in the wind. And the reason is that the um, mushrooms themselves are really being made by the fungus to disperse the spores. Rather than blowing in the wind, because wind is random, right? You know, if you're a spore, you want to land in a moist location that has a lot of nutrients, right? And so maybe a pile of feces would be really good for a fungus. So how could you land in a pile of feces the most efficiently, right? And the way that you can land in a pile of feces the most efficiently is if an organism eats you and then it actually poops out your spores and your spores don't get digested. And that's exactly what happens with the fungi, right? So reality, in reality what these mushrooms are is that these mushrooms are just ways that the fungus is manipulating us to eat them so that the spores can go through our system and end up in a um, pile of feces. Okay. So a big group of dispersers for um, fungi and mushrooms then would be small mammals, like squirrels. So squirrels, if you ever observe squirrels in trees, you can see them all the time eating mushrooms. Now there are a group of mushrooms in the Basidia mycota that are adapted specifically for squirrels, which are called hypogeus, hypo below geus um, earth. So below the earth, these never even get above ground and so they don't use any wind dispersal at all for their spores. And then what happens is a squirrel eats it, runs off and it um, poops out the spores and the spores end up directly in, um, in the feces and can grow directly. So here's a question for you uh, when we think about it. What about then hallucinogenic fungi? Why does a mushroom put in the effort to create a hallucinogenic compound? Okay, or even poisonous compounds like amanita. Why would um, mushrooms then produce poisonous compounds? And here in this view, you can see all those little teeny tiny spores right on that close up of that gill. And so perhaps, which I don't think it's known at all, you know, the hallucinogenic part of mushrooms may be because animals like to get high. If they like to get high, they may come back and eat a lot more of a particular mushroom. In the case of, um, of um, deadly compounds, it might be more that there, you have specific um, mammals adapted to eat those that are not going to be influenced by the deadly compounds of the mushroom. Okay, or they really want to be wind dispersed rather than being eaten. But then again, they put a lot of energy into that. So there are a lot of questions associated with mushrooms and um, the Basidia mycota does put a lot of energy into the mushrooms 
to be eaten by mammals.